Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to watch today's video. Got a good one for y'all today. We are gonna be talking about how to maximize your area. In other words, when you get into your fishing spot, I don't care if it's a grass bed or a point or a cove or whatever, try to maximize every option that you have within there to catch every fish that lives there. Because I think a lot of people they go through an area and they may or may not catch fish, but they don't, they leave everything behind. They leave fish behind there that they could be catching by not maximizing the potential of that area. So we're going to give you guys some good tips and advice on that in today's video. I'm um, also guys, quick reminder out there, if you guys are interested in supporting advanced bass fishing and you like the stuff that's going on here, guys, the best thing you can do is just go into the description I put in every video. Uh, use and bookmark my tackle warehouse link for all your tackle purchases. That's a great way to support the channel. Um, also, subscribing to the channel helps out, but just using those links are a good way to do that if you guys want to give something back. So, I really appreciate that. Okay, guys, one of the things about bass fishing is like, um, they're, they're, I think a lot of people, they either overestimate or they underestimate the potential that a spot has to produce fish. And this is something that there's a lot of different things connected to it. In other words, the amount of fish that can live in a particular area is determined a lot of times by the amount of cover there and its proximity to deeper water. So in general, this is not the way it is all the time, but in general, the more cover that you have in an area, and that cover can be in any form. It can be docks, it can be grass beds, lily pads, rocks, it could be anything. The more diversity and the more type of cover um, the more potential an area has. And also, your better areas are going to have some type of a closer access to deeper water. And I don't, I don't mean they have to be right next to deep water, but say, for example, if you're fishing a grass bed or some laydown trees or, or, you know, boat docks that are in shallow water, the proximity to deeper water is nearby. Nearby, I mean within, you know, maybe 50 to 100 yards, something like that. If you have those elements, the proximity to deeper water and the, the, the predominant or diversity of cover, the area has a lot of potential. But if you don't have that, if you, if you have an area that has isolated or sparse cover and not real close proximity to any type of creek, river channel or deeper water, um, the number of fish that will live or occupy that area is a lot more limited. So that's one of the things to remember on a, on a real generic level there. Another thing with that, whoop, I was had a, thought somebody was coming on the drive. It looked like a FedEx truck down there. Another thing to remember that, one of the things I really wanted to get into in today's video is how to get the most out of the area you're fishing. Now, this doesn't matter. It can, it can be anything. Like I said, it can be a row of boat docks. It can be a, some points you're fishing. It could be a ledge or a drop-off. It could be brush piles, lily pads, whatever the predominant cover is in the area that you're fishing. In order to, to really get the most out of bass fishing, you have to get everything out of the area that you're fishing and maximize that area. Now, here's some, here's some ways that you can maximize an area, and here, here's some ways that people do not maximize an area. I'll, let, me go, let me start out with how people don't maximize an area. Let's say, for example, they're fishing down a stretch of boat docks or grass bed or whatever cover that you have, and they make one pass down that particular area with one lure and you know say they catch two or three fish doing that and they just leave or they go back through the same area they make another pass through it with the same area same angle same casting techniques everything like that and e as each pass goes through say they catch three fish on the first pass and they catch two fish on the second pass and they come back through it and catch one fish on the third pass and then even if they go back four times on the fourth pass they catch no fish so here's what you need to do to learn to maximize that particular area. First of all, depending upon the type of cover that you have, there are a lot of different lures and techniques that could potentially work on that. Now let's just, let's just for generic sakes, we're just talking about an example. Let's talk about a lay down tree in the water. And I talk about lay down trees in the water because they're such good bass cover. And it, this could be anything. Like I said, it could be grass, dock, whatever. But let's just talk about a laydown tree in the water and how to maximize the potential of that laydown tree or a bank that has a lot of laydown trees on it. Let's say for the first pass that I make through there, I'm throwing a spinnerbait, you know, just plucking along the edges there, and I'm catching a few fish here and there. 
In order to maximize that area, after you make a pass with your spinner bait, which is a reaction power fishing lure, the next thing that you do is you come back through that area with a different lure category. And when I, when I talk about a lure category, a different lure presentation. So if you make that first cast through there with a spinner bait, which is a horizontal presentation of a reaction lure, come back through that same piece of cover with a slow bait, like a Texas rig worm or a jig, something that you can fish slower on the bottom. And then after you make that second pass with the slow lure, you can determine a little bit more about the mood and the personality of the fish. Basically, you know, if they're in a chasing mood or not a chasing mood. Now, based upon that, let's say, for example, you made a pass down there with a spinner bait and you caught three, you caught three fish down this big row of lay down trees. And then you make another pass down through there with a jig on your second pass and you catch three fish on the jig. Now, the thing that you want to do after that, you realize that there is a good population of fish there because you caught fish on both a reaction lure and a slow lure. So after you do that, you have to then to determine, you have to, you have to get more specific about it in terms of color and profile. So let's say the first pass through there, I caught them with a white and chartreuse spinnerbait. And then I caught them with a black and blue jig on the second pass. On the third pass, come back through there with a different color on each lure. Try a different color of spinnerbait, maybe different blade color. See if that has any impact on it. Come back through there with a different jig color. And as you come through there with a different color, you're gonna continue to either have the potential to maximize that area and catch more fish out of it, or it's not going to work. And you know, you do this for a couple times and then you isolate the best color. And once you've isolated that best color, then you work on your casting angles and your casting presentation. So let's say, for example, you've determined that a white and chartreuse spinnerbait is the bait and the color that they want on these lay down trees. And you've been taking that spinnerbait and you've been tossing it around the corners and the edges of the uh, tree to try to get an ambush strike. The next thing that you want to do with that is, is alter your retrieve and your casting angle. So instead of just reeling that spinnerbait, you know, right close to the edge of that laid-on tree, reel that spinnerbait close to that ed edge of that tree, then kill it. Let it drop four or five inches. Or shake your rod tip and give it a stop and go retrieve. Or change your casting angles. Make that cast start making a short pitch inside to the interior part of the limbs of the tree and reel that spinnerbait maybe three or four feet before it hits the limb and try to come at it at a different angle. Another thing you can do is if you are working around the outside of that tree and you're casting on the outside and down the sides of that tree, position your boat close to the bank and throw out in deeper water and bring that spinnerbait from deep water to shallow water on that same tree. Alternate the casting angles. So but by doing that, by alternating casting angles, alternating retrieves, um, figuring out and determining the best blade configuration, the best color of the skirt, everything that goes with that, you're maximizing the potential of that particular area. Now, it even gets more complicated as you have some type of a weather change because maximizing the potential of that particular area also has a lot to do with paying attention to what the weather's doing. Let's say, for example, we'll go back to our same lay down tree and you know, you fish that lay down tree right off the bat in the morning, it's low light, there's some shade on the water, and you're catching them on the spinnerbait in low light conditions. Um, and then all of a sudden you continue fishing down, you know, you're running this pattern of fishing lay down trees. And about 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning when the sun starts getting higher, your bites start to, to go away. Now you continue to maximize that particular pattern that you're fishing again by a bait change. Um, as the sun gets higher, it gets a little bit more brighter. You either have to change your colors, go to more subtle color, or change your, your bait uh, category again. Pitching and flipping a jig in the middle of that tree, pitching and flipping a creature bait, something like that, is going to continue to maximize that area. So the main gist of the topic here is when you settle down on a specific pattern or the type of cover that you're fishing, in order to maximize that area, you have to alternate your lures, your lure categories, the colors of your lures, the way you retrieve the lures, the casting angles, your boat positioning, 
and pay attention also to the sunlight angles where the shade's at is when it's not at. And once you do that, once you give yourself the opportunity to have a, a sort of a diverse repertoire of techniques and approaches to that piece of cover, you're going to maximize your efficiency on that particular area. And don't, feel, don't be afraid to experiment and don't be afraid to try off the wall stuff. I mean, I've done stuff before like, you know, if I get into an area where I think there's a lot of fish, again, on our theoretical bank that's got the lay down trees, let's say, for example, I was catching them on a black and blue half ounce jig and the water visibility was 12 inches. I've done stuff as crazy as putting a little four inch worm on, like a little straight tailed black four inch worm and pitching that thing in that dirty water on those lay down trees and I continue to catch bass with it. So just experiment. Use your imagination and your creativity. And if you have the elements that are that are in place to have a high potential area that we talked about at the first of the video, if you've got an area that has a lot of cover, a diversity of cover, and some access to deeper water, always take your time to spend more time there because your odds of having larger numbers of fish are far greater than that. So if you've got a piece of cover or a bank or something that could be a big lily pad field or whatever it is, don't give up on it after your first pass. Make sure that you go through there and make multiple passes with different lure categories, colors, and presentations before you give up on it because eventually you're going to click on something. Something's going to work and then, then it's going to just open up this, you know, entire new world for you. And that's one of the thing about fishing that I'll tell you guys, um, because I've done this and been through this many times. I've been out there fishing and I've spent say the whole day without a bite. And it's like, I'm, I'm just frustrated. It's like, God, I just can't figure this out. And I'm trying different stuff. And it's like, these fish just aren't biting. And it's like everything you're, nothing's working. It's like absolutely nothing's working. And then all of a sudden, you make the right bait change or you or you make the right area change and you start catching them, boom, boom, boom. And it's like you're in a different world. It's like the whole world has opened up and now it becomes easy. It's like, oh man, I can't believe, why didn't I think about this earlier? There's a bunch of places I can do this with. And there's always something like that, guys. There's always something that is working on the lake. It's, you just have to figure out what it is. So anyway, I hope it helps out, guys. And we'll talk later. See you.